Hi, this is Mrs. Notgard. Today you're going to learn about the qualitative lab that we do over the next couple of days. Please follow along. If I say to highlight something, please do that. Please make sure that if you don't understand something, pause the video, rewind it, and play it again. That should help a little bit. The objective of this lab is to perform necessary tests and to identify a substance by both chemical name and formula, just like we've been practicing this unit. So you'll get three different substances. You don't know what they are. You have to do some tests to figure out what, what it is. You'll identify it with the name and formula. Basically, then you'll bring it up to me. I'll check it. You'll get a new one. Um, here we go. So it's a time-limited assessment. It counts for 5% of, of your overall semester grade. We'll do this in basically two blocks. Points are awarded based on the performance of the experiments, meaning a successful identification of the unknown substance. And here we go. So you can use this booklet for this qualitative lab. Each student is given a different unknown solution. You have to work on your own to identify that. You must follow proper lab procedures, meaning not mixing or contaminating chemicals for testing. Failure to follow that will be losing points or time from the lab. Um, please make sure you're here. Unknowns not identified will receive zero points. If you have excused absences, you can make those up. Um, unexcused, no. Students must be working. Um, make sure you stop working and perform lab area cleanup before the end of each lab time. Um, so a clean a lab area will be important. When you think you have your substance identified, you'll be informed as to whether it's correct or not. If incorrect, points are deducted and you retest it again. I cannot tell you specific information about what's wrong and why, but I can tell you if the problem is with the name or the formula or both. So here's how the grading works. 80 points. The first unknown is worth 30 points. The second is worth 20. The last is worth 10. And then there's a 5-point bonus. You complete what's called an observation sheet for each unknown substance. When you feel like you have it identified, you bring it up to the teacher to have it checked. Points are awarded for correctness. If you're incorrect, you get to go back and try it again. Um, final answers to be checked as a whole, so not separate ions. Basically, each time you get it wrong, you lose 10% of points. Um, so the first substance is worth 30 points. Each time you get something wrong, you lose 3 points. So if it takes you 3 tries, you'd get 21 out of 30 points. And if on the second, it was worth 20 points. If you missed it just once, you'd get 18 out of 20, and so on. Safety. Please wear goggles at all times. Make sure you're wearing appropriate clothing for lab. No open-toed shoes. Um, do not waste chemicals. No unauthorized experiments. Um, please make sure there's no horseplay, goofing around. No roaming, stay at your lab station, be responsible. So, these are the directions. You're going to use this and your flowchart to find out what substance you have. You can use this document alone. I'm going to be switching back and forth between another window to help you fill out a flowchart that you can use as well. So, your unknown contains two parts. It's a cation and, a, and an anion, so a positive and negative part. You do some chemical tests that help you narrow down the possibilities until you identify both parts of your unknown. Okay. Um, so your observations based on the test tell you what to do next. You really just have to read and follow their directions. When you're done with testing, you'll wash off the, the sheet and the sink with distilled water, dry with paper towel. So you get your unknown and you start with what's called the lead to and silver test instructions. These tests help you determine the identity of your anion, so the negative ion. You place five drops of your unknown in the lead box and two drops um, of the lead testing solution into the puddle of the unknown. Make your observations, record them in the information sheet. Then you place drops of your unknown in the silver box and then two drops of the silver testing solution. Make observations. Four things can happen. Here they are. If there are signs of a chemical reaction with lead and not silver, you go to the sulfate instructions, which are right here. If there are signs of a chemical reaction only with silver, not with lead, you go to the chloride instructions. So 
so you'd start here. If there are signs of a chemical reaction in both, you go to the phosphate instructions right here. And lastly, if there are no signs of a chemical reaction in either box, you go to the nitrate NO3- instructions. Now remember, a reaction is a precipitate. We did a lab where you actually saw different precipitates form when you mix two liquids together. That is what you're looking for. So I'm going to show you how to fill out a flow chart that guides you through this. So you have this right here. Here's your unknown substance. What you do with that is that you always do the lead to and silver test. So these little circles, or ovals I should say, are the tests that you do. The white rectangles are your unknown identification. The blue would be your observations. So whether a reaction took place or not. All right, so here I want you to write lead, two, and silver. And I'm gonna write AG plus test. Zoom out. So if there are signs of a chemical reaction with this test, with lead and not silver, okay. so that's where I'm going to write. So this is basically option A. So here I would type, so lead reaction. No reaction, I'm going to abbreviate for silver. So as you can see here in this first box, if there's a reaction in the lead box but not the silver, I'm going to follow this section of the flow chart. So that's where I write down my observations. Here, okay, I write down what's the anion, so part of my answer. So here it says go to the sulfate instructions. So I'm going to find the sulfate instructions. It says by having signs of a chemical reaction in the lead box and not the silver box, your unknown contains the sulfate anion. That is part of your answer, sulfate. So part of your unknown is sulfate. So right here you're going to type in SO4 2 minus. Again, that's a There we go. So that's your unknown anion. Then it says here to figure out the positive or the cation, you do the hydroxide test. So right here, this is the OH minus test. So that's what I'm going to follow next. It says um, place drops of your unknown in the hydroxide box, and then two drops of the hydroxide testing solution to that puddle make observations. Two things can happen. There could be a reaction that's A or no signs of chemical reaction is B. So here, is option A. Here is B. So this is my observations. So it says if there are signs of chemical reaction, I can simply write reaction. And it says I have the Magnesium, oops, cation. So here's my cation, here's my anion. Next I would um, figure out what's my compound. That would be Mg SO4. I go to this side. I read part B over here. If there are no signs of a chemical reaction, so no reaction, meaning no precipitate form, that means that the cation will be lithium. So my final answer here would be Li. Two, and this is would have been a result of the crossover method. And SO4.
And this is a polytonic cation, so that can be in parentheses. So what you're going to do is that you're going to read the directions, fill out your flow chart based on what the directions say. Now, here's what you actually do your tests on. Or this is where you actually write down your observations. So you'll get one of these. You write down your observations based on the lead and, lead and silver test. You'll circle a yes or no depending on what happens. Then you do the test that tells you in the direction. So I should never see all six tests filled out, ever. Another hint here is that these are all the potential answers. So it's important to look at that. Um, compound name and formula would go right here, and then points awarded would go there. This is the sheet that you'll get. This is where you actually do the chemical reactions and where you observe them. So you get it in the black dot or on the white. All right, so next what you're going to do is that you're going to fill out your flow chart. And with your unknown, you always start the lead twin silver test to figure out your anion. Now here's a little hint. If section A happens, you go this route, just like I had filled out. If section B happens, so I can search, this is route B. So basically in this box, I'd write down there are signs of, um, there's a reaction in silver, not lead, then I go to the chloride instructions. This is where you need to read your instructions very carefully. It tells me that my answer is the chloride ion. So I put Cl minus here. Then it tells me to do another test, the hydroxide test. And then depending on what happens, it could be one of two things, so section A and B. So basically you need to read the directions, fill out the flowchart based on what, what it says. This flowchart simplifies things for you in the end. It's worth 20 points while you're completing it. So again, for the actual qualitative lab, you get to use the flowchart and the direction sheet. And you're given three unknowns worth points, and you get one more for a bonus, all or nothing. This takes place over three days. Please make sure you watch this video, read the packet very carefully. This video is to help you. You can read this packet and get the same exact thing. Um, again, please make sure you read it. If you have questions, make sure that you ask me. All right, good luck.